Oh That's man, it. she's back. Come That's on. Good. Yeah. We have our goat. We got Jory Jans and the greatest nutrition expert in Canada, North America. I'm thinking aloud here on the mornings in the lab with Keith and friends. She's here to help us. Yeah, true story, guys. She's here to help us through what we should be eating after a workout to speed up recovery. I, as I was putting together today's topic, I'm sitting here going, okay, John, Jory, Keith, and Marty, what are we eating after we work out? Some people don't eat. Some people eat meat. Some people eat carbs. Some people crush a protein shake. I just want to throw the conversation on the table today. John might have a different point of view. Marty, Jory, let's talk about this idea about after my workout, how can I hold myself accountable to eat something properly? Jory Jansen. Yeah, I love the accountability talk. And one of the things that I first look at when I'm working with someone is what's their narrative? So what I mean by that is what is their talk? What are they telling themselves? What are they sharing with me? So someone, are you more heavily thoughts? Are you a thinker? Are you a feeler? I'm a feeler and a wants. So I feel deeply and then I want to act right away. So if you're someone like that, then you're probably like that around food too. And just to understand your narrative, how do you show people what's your talk? Are you more negative, positive? Not that you're a negative person, but are you someone that looks at risk and really evaluates it? So you're going to think about it. You're going to look at if I eat this and the outcome, are you more positive? Glass is helpful. Do this and I'm going to be okay. And later on, I will get back on the, the train of where I want to be. So really what you're going to do depends on your own self-narrative. Once you get that figured out, then you can move to the next steps of, is it a protein? It, is it more like, I like my high protein pancakes. I've been doing that for 20 some years. Everyone that works with me knows about those. Favorite. Right. And it's so easy. You don't need any supplements if it's something that you're worried about because some of the athletes that I work with have to be worried about that. But really figuring out where are you at and then what is the outcome? Are you looking to actually recover because you've got another workout in your day? You need a full balanced recovery snack before the next 24 hours because that matters. Are you working out once a day? And if it's early in the morning, you've got a little more wiggle room. But the uptake of nutrients will happen quicker within that first window yes. of opportunity within that first yes. hour. Really figure out your self-talk, what's you keeping yourself accountable to your goal? What is the outcome that you're looking for? Are you working out once a day? Are you working out in the morning and you've got to be on for the rest of the day? Are you working out in the evening? Because that's when you can fit it in. So then you're probably not going to eat a big recovery meal. It's going to be a recovery snack. Talk about nutrition timing. Yeah. We do training and you said my, my lift is done. It's nine o'clock in the morning. My lift's done. Should I be eating something right away within the hour or two hours? Talk to me about, and I see Johnny nodding as well. So Jory hit you first and Johnny come in after that, but talk about that timing window. Like I'm done working out. Is my body saying feed me right now? Or is my body saying, nah, just take some time and enjoy the rest, Keith? It's yes to both. And so I like the idea of fueling to some degree afterwards. And my reasoning is that then you have more control for the rest of your day. The longer you wait, then hangry comes in and then you have less control, especially if you're wants oriented and you're going to react um. and oriented and <clears throat> Um, so I think it, it's, if you can get it within that window of opportunity, even if you have 24 hours of cover, it's ideal. The nutrient uptake is quicker during that time frame. Protein, yeah, for sure. And again, it depends. Are you training for your triathlon? A high carbohydrate intake is also going to be important. If you're training to just increase that lean muscle mass, decrease body fat, let's focus on the protein. Some carbohydrates that helps with the protein intake as well. But yeah, you have to look at what is it that you're training for, fueling for. I want to add something. All protein isn't the same, right? There's different, there's efficient protein that's going to like age your muscle growth and there's protein that's really not going to do anything. So I had a client and she was, I asked her what she having for breakfast after the workout this morning and she said Greek yogurt and because it has 15 grams of protein in it. And I told her like, that's not bad to eat, but you probably want a more sufficient source of protein. Do you see what I'm trying to say, Jory, after a lift session? So can you expound on that a little bit? How like it just because something says protein and it doesn't mean that's all you need. You know, you, you need a, a good amount and probably a more efficient for muscle growth. I was thinking more of eggs, maybe a, a source of meat because she, she's not like a vegan or anything like that. Say yes. And also I'm going to say yes to your client. And the reason is that overall, unless you're like an elite of the elite athlete, not just elite athlete, you're going to be getting, you're looking at overall energy availability. If you want to get the muscle gain, if you want to get the recovery time, quickly, it's going to be energy availability. So that's fancy terminology that the IOC uses for getting the calories you need in your day. At I the like end that. of the 
day, you can eat your protein, but if you're not hitting the calorie mark as efficient and, and you're not going to reach your goals as quickly. If we're looking for muscle, we're looking for that amino acid and you're going to get that from a variety of food products, especially animal proteins, right? It's going to be easy to target that. So the Greek yogurt is a great start. And then what are they going to have within the next couple of hours? Maybe yep. it will be that, that the eggs or something like that. And that's why we like our high protein pancakes, right? They've got both in there. Mm -hmm. And then if you can food combination things, then you're likely going to meet a variety of nutrients and, and hit that. But at least it's still a start. My my biggest one is when, especially women, but they're like, I hit my collagen. I got, I put my scoop of collagen in. I'm like, collagen has its role, but not necessarily for muscle recovery. We want some other amino acids in there, not just yep, the collagen. Yep. So yeah, I agree. We're looking for that higher leucine intake. That's an amino acid, but I, I think it's still great progress. And then it's all, and also that's how I work, but yep. I do hear what you're saying. And, and I agree. Yeah. Johnny, look here. I think one, I think the first thing that I really stress, and if people don't understand is that window post, and we're talking about this, but I want to make sure it's real clear. The window post training is really important. The body has the ability to do more with that food than it does in other times of the day. It's trying to heal. So I was trying to make an analogy. If you, if there were, let's just say between your lunch break, between 12 and one o'clock, there was a, a blackjack table where you were going to win 80% of the time. Of course, you're going to go use that blackjack table when you're going to win 80% of the time versus at a different time when you're only going to win 40% of the time. And so you just, when you explain it to people that, Hey, this is the time, this is the window where you're going to get more success. You're going to get more return for what you're yep. eating. It becomes a little bit easier for them to adhere to that. So the first thing that I'm going to have them do is they're as soon as they're done, like at the gym, they're going to bring some sort of easily digestible protein. And that's just enough to get basically boom, the stomach's got some nutrient, the body starts to heal, starts the recovery process. Then they start heading for that next meal and they got a little, that window of opportunity has been used and the body's doing its thing as they head for the next meal. But I think what people tend to, what to tend to miss is that it's a big opportunity to get more out of what you're doing when you utilize that 60 minutes post-training. And quickly, John and Jory, talk about insulin post-workout and why we want to have food to taste to, to chase insulin response in our body. John, start with you before we go to Jory. Yeah, so insulin is, think of it like this, insulin is a transport hormone which means that when insulin goes up, you're basically, your body has the ability to basically store or transport more nutrients at a faster pace. And so when post-training, when you eat something, especially if you, tri you trigger your insulin even a little bit, your body's going to shuttle that nutrient into where it needs to go much faster. Now, the problem is that people get over the top of this thing. Oh my goodness, I'm going to, I'm going to use my insulin. Next thing they <laughs> use their insulin to create a bunch of a big belly and a set of man tits. So you got to understand insulin is probably the most powerful hormone that the body has. And too much insulin will kill you. It, it's crazy. It's like you can, I, uh, the science behind this goes real deep. I'll let Jory jump in here. But ultimately, when the insulin is triggered post-training, the body is going to be much more efficient at bringing the nutrients where it needs to go. Yeah. Jory. Yeah, summed it up. Matthew, you got a question for Jory yeah. right there? I see that. Mark, Mark there, brother, quickly. Uh, I says, what is your opinion regarding pre-workout supplements, hydration, and diets? Oh, yeah. pre-workouts. Get them. Get them, Jory. Get them. <laughs> No, the jury go after it. Why? Why? No, I don't find the evidence to support it. Other than mentally, if that's your little, if your shaker cup is your accountability, then there it is. There we go. Love it's that. Placebo, baby. Placebo. Placebo is just as real as anything. <laughs> yeah, I would just caution in terms of like where you put it. I mean, it's not in a huge expense. However, yeah, whatever it is that, that you want. Your pre-workout could be something like your pre-workout fueling source. It doesn't have to be a pre-workout beverage that you're buying or powder that you're downing. What's in there? The tingling from the beta alanine feels good. The caffeine can give you that hype for sure. Can feel good, can feel quite the opposite. So it really depends. I would say workout is, but if it's your accountability partner, what the heck? It's not doing harm. Why not? But yeah, I think that the fueling strategy for sure after, if you're an early morning person, 
fueling to to the max of your potential probably isn't going to happen if you're going to have a quality workout but timing before after it's all anywhere you can do a google search three to four hours before a workout or exercise for a big meal anything an hour or less you're keeping it very simple carb you're not going to have much protein if any and keeping the fat down because those take longer to break down there you go there you go real, real quick look i just want to make one little thing what, what jory said about i mentioned placebo she said it works i think people that understand placebo sometimes takes a negative effect a negative connotation when remember if you let's just say you snap your fingers and that makes you believe that you can have a good workout if you believe you can achieve the man who believes he cannot and the man who believes he can are both correct whatever it is that makes you believe you can have a go good have a good workout if it's that pre-workout as long as you're sleeping at night rock and roll baby that placebo is real don't think that's a negative thing all right we're hanging out with jory johnson the leader of the protein break and here's the big takeaway today nation when you finish your workout don't forget to fuel up. Yep, true story. The right post-workout nutrition can make a huge difference in recovery and progress. Good morning, Shinku. I see you there. Up, Whether it's protein, carbs, hydration, you got to put something in your body. That's just the bottom line. You heard it from Jordan. You heard it from John. And uh, put some food in your body. Timing is important. And if you're ready to dial in your post-workout nutrition, hit that like button and let us know in the comments what your go-to recovery meal is. And I love what Jory said. If that that, if that shaker cup is your accountability partner to help you get through things, then lean into that. Yeah. And hey, listen, don't forget to stick around. Hour two is coming up next. But before we do that, we're going to invite Christina Flynn in for the brand bite. Jory, thanks for joining us today.